Jubal brings music to humankind. Another of Cain's sons was Jubal. In the daytime, when the sun shone, Jubal was sad. At night, when the stars sparkled, Jubal was happy. Why was that? When night came and Jubal went to sleep, he had the most wonderful dreams. In his dreams, he walked through the rainbow-colored portal of heaven, where angels sang and played music. The stars resounded like the ringing of bells. When he heard the angels sing, he would softly join in their song. But whenever Jubal awakened, he would forget all the songs. At that time, human beings had no instruments, nor could they sing. This is why Jubal was sad. Often he thought, if only I could sleep, dream, and sing in the heavenly house forever. I wish I never had to return to earth. When he lay down to sleep the next evening, he prayed to his guardian angel. Take me away from this sad earth where no songs or music gladdens my heart. Then his guardian angel appeared and said, Jubal, Yahweh has heard your plea. He has pity on you and mankind. You, Jubal, shall be a great singer. You may bring to mankind songs and music such as you hear in heaven. You shall bring them as a consolation for the heaven that was lost. With these words, he gave Jubal a golden cup and made him drink of it. No sooner did Jubal drink of the cup than he heard the music of heaven and stars ring mightily in his ears. When he awoke, the music rang on. It resounded through him so that the songs poured from his lips. He went among the people and sang his songs. To the shepherds, he sang shepherd songs. To the farmers, the songs of the fields. The sun, the stars, and the moon that rises at evening, all were praised with music and hymns. His song brought comfort to all who were sad. He sang to the children of how Yahweh had created the world, how the robin warbles and the horse trots. People did not forget the songs. They sang them and passed them on from generation to generation. Jubal once slept under a large bush. In his dream, an angel appeared and played music upon a heavenly instrument. It looked like a tube with several small holes in it. Jubal asked the angel, may I also play such an instrument? I should so like to. The angel pointed toward the bush. Take wood from these branches and make the instrument. Jubal awoke. He broke a branch from the bush and went to Thubal Cain and told him of his dream. Thubal said, I will forge a silver knife. With it, we can carve the instrument from the wood. Skillfully, Thubal forged a knife of silver, and with it carved the first flute out of wood. It was a perfect copy of the heavenly flute. Jubal had seen another strange instrument in a dream. When he to told Thubal Cain of it, Thubal forged a formed a lyre from wood. The strings were made from sheep gut which was twisted, stretched, and dried in the air. Jubal sat in the forest under a tree and played his lyre. Curious mice slipped out of their hiding places, listened to the music, and began to dance. After a time, they kept still and listened. A wild cat came and detected the mice, but Jubal's music sounded so sweet that she forgot the mice and lay down at its feet. Not a mouse ran away. Two rabbits heard the music. They hobbled to the cat, sat down beside her, and wiggled their ears to the music. A fox crept up to the clearing when he saw the many small creatures, his mouth drooled. I'll rush in and have three meals in one. But the strains of Jubal's lyre stilled his hunger, and his bushy tail began to wag to the rhythm of the music. He lay down beside the rabbits. The bushes ruff rustled, and a wolf appeared. With his sharp eye, he had seen the animals and was contemplating. Shall I take the fox, the cat, or the rabbit? But Jubal's music reached his ears, and though he pawed them as if to ward off flies, he too was forced to lay down. With his head on his paws and his eyes closed, he listened to the music. 
Branches cracked in the undergrowth. An enormous bear came lumbering out of the woods. When he heard, heard Jabal's music, he rose up on his hind legs and danced into the clearing. He danced and lolled about until he tumbled down and lay comfortably on his belly. All the animals lay around Jabal while he played. Gradually, they all fell asleep. Jabal smiled and thought to himself, in paradise, the animals were as peaceful as this. When the darkness began to fall, he rose and left the forest. All was dark when the mice awakened. Seeing the wild cat, they scampered into their holes. Then the rabbits awakened. Frightened, they looked around and dashed into the underbrush. The wild cat yawned and stretched, saw the fox and the wolf, and melted into the shadows. The fox yawned and opened his eyes. Catching scent of the wolf and bear, he asked, What am I doing here? Quickly, he sneaked away. The wolf scratched his nose. What? I've been sleeping near a bear? Swiftly, he ran off. The bear awoke only the next morning. Astonished, he looked around. What a dream I had! Mice, rabbits, fox, wildcat, wolf, and a man playing music. That was a marvelous dream. I'd like to dream it again. And contentedly, he ambled toward his cave. Nama, one of Cain's daughters, had woven a long white robe for Jubal. When he rode upon his white horse wearing the white robe, he looked like a messenger of God. At night, he would rest at the edge of a forest on the top of a hill. Often he played his flute under the gleaming stars. No wild animal ever did him harm. One night he rested upon a hill, not realizing that a village was nearby. His horse had lain down at his feet. As he began to play upon his flute, one in one of the huts a young girl awakened. She nudged her brother and said, Listen, a night bird is singing. No, the boy whispered, it is surely the voice of an angel. I have never heard a wh bird whistle like that. Come, we'll go outside and listen. The children's father and mother were sound asleep and did not hear the children go out. The music came from the hilltop where they could see a white form. Afraid to climb the hill alone, they awakened their parents. Listen, they said, music is sounding from the hill. Full of amazement, the parents listened. Filled with awe and wonder, they took their children by the hand and slowly climbed the hill. Halfway up, they stopped, and in the moon and starlight, they saw the white form more clearly. A melody so pure and gentle ran through the still stillness that they fell on their knees and bowed their heads. After a while, more people awakened and gathered at the foot of the hill. They did not dare to climb up the hill for fear of disturbing the music. Then Jubal took up his lyre and sang. The music resounded afar. He sang and played until sunrise. Then he mounted his horse and lifting his hand in greeting, he rode down the hill. In awe, the people bowed their heads before him. Soon he disappeared behind dark trees. The people of the village built a stone altar where he had sung and they brought offerings to the heavenly powers who had spoken to them through Jubal's music. Jubal often met children on his wanderings. He played for them and taught them to sing simple songs. Wherever he rode out, the children would follow after him until night fell. They would beg and plead for more songs. Even the smallest of them began to hum and sing. The older ones whittled whistles and pipes. Thus, evermore singing and playing filled the lives of the people of Earth.